variables that seem to modulate our sensitivity. I mentioned one was a geomagnetic field, mm -hmm. and a relatively new development was the aspect of the geomagnetic field that's the important one. It turns out to be called something, it's called the uh, micropulsations. It's a certain frequency of the geomagnetic field that when it is present, people are much more psychic than when it is not present. So it's not simply that the geomagnetic field is quiet, but a certain frequency is present. And this suggests that there may be a, a biochemical thing that is happening in the brain that is resonating with these certain frequencies, which make us more, more able to contact these unconscious emotional things. Mm -hmm. Is there, I wonder if anybody's done any studies, you keep mentioning the geomagnetic field, mm -hmm. uh, it is in an unusual state right now, um, nearly um, not affected at all by the sun. The sun is so quiet right now that uh, the geomagnetic field is simply unaffected uh, by the sun. It's at an all-time quiet. And, and then, of course, presumably, eventually, we're going to move into a very active phase with the sun, uh, and we're going to be getting all kinds of uh, flares, and the geomagnetic field will get very active. There should be some sort of correlation between the active periods of the geomagnetic field and, and the quiet times, yes? Uh, yes, although the, the, now that we're beginning to understand that there are certain frequencies involved, uh, the solar wind is still pushing. It's pushing That's true. Even though there, are, there aren't sunspots, we're still getting the solar wind, fortunately, otherwise we'd all be fried by now. Believe it or not, there was actually some recent days, uh, there were articles about it, uh, uh, Dean, in which uh, the solar wind slowed almost to nothing. It, it was remarkable. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of frightening. <laughs> it is kind of frightening, yes. That doesn't happen very often, and we're so dependent on, on the solar wind to keep the, our magnetic shield in place properly. Uh, I, well, will it affect human behavior on, on many scales? And the answer is uh, almost certainly it will, because there's, there's a lot of... of uh, studies looking at things like accidents and domestic violence and on and on and on that are strongly correlated with changes in the geomagnetic field. So when we start going into a period which has much more active and chaotic uh, field strength, we're probably going to see some, some interesting things happening. And so then it might be possible to, as you did, with, as was done with the consciousness study, mm -hmm. it might be possible to go back and look at the various solar peaks and minimums and try and correlate it with uh, some sort of human activity, I, I, I bet that's been done. Yes, yes. And that, that's what this, this new initiative called the Global Coherence Initiative is all about. And the Global Consciousness Project was one component of this new, larger initiative. Uh, part of it came about because of all this research showing human behavior is, is related to the geomagnetic field. but mm -hmm. Uh, shortly after 9-11, I, I started looking at all kinds of uh, ongoing data streams that we had just to see whether something unusual may have happened at 9-11. And one that I ran across was uh, the satellites that monitor the, the geomagnetic field from space. Mm -hmm. These are uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration satellites, the, the right. NOAA satellites. What I found was uh, something rather odd where if you, you look at September 10th and September 11th, 2001, uh, September 10th, you, you see a, a diurnal rhythm, like a sine wave of the geomagnetic field, very smooth. And then about 9 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, you see a sudden jump. And now we're talking about satellites that are way up in space, but there's a sudden jump in the geomagnetic field. And from that point on for the rest of, the, of September 11th, it's a very jagged-looking curve. Really? So I... So I've asked some of my friends who know, who know about these things, well, what in the world could have caused a disruption that these satellites felt? And these are satellites on opposite sides of the Earth. What were they detecting? One person said, well, they're detecting all of our space hardware turning on. So what does that mean? Well, all of our spy satellites and things like that. I don't think I buy that explanation because while those satellites are pretty sensitive, uh, suddenly they turned on after 9-11. They weren't on before 9-11. That doesn't make any sense to me. So That is odd. Yeah. It, so raise the possibility that maybe what we've seen as a geomagnetic field effect actually goes both ways. Got it. All right. 
This is as good as it gets. Dean Radin is my guest. By now, you ought to know what we're talking about. It's uh, really fascinating. From Manila in the Philippines, I'm Art Bell. Here I am indeed, a place where the sun is high in the sky right now. Strange that that may seem. I darken down my room, and to me, it's uh, it's still the middle of the night with this program. This is the kind of thing you do at night. You don't do it during the day. But I guess I do, don't I? Anyway, uh, it's Dean Radin this night, and we're talking about consciousness, which to me is just absolutely fascinating. I've got a couple of more questions for Dean, and then we're going to move to the... Uh, Move to the phone. So you've got the numbers. Uh, feel free to join us. We'll be back with Dean Radin in a moment. Just a couple of notes. Uh, that was a commercial during the break for the CC Witness. And I've got to tell you, it's an MP3 player, you know, with uh, it's just awesome. With AM, FM, and uh, then what something called the computer, which is where you obtain all your favorite music wherever you get it and uh, in mp3 format and then you in about 5 minutes you download 100 or 200 songs into the witness or hundreds more all your favorite stuff and it's small and in the bell household i can tell you right now the two gals that you see in that photograph um <laughs> The witness rules. It absolutely rules. They walk around with the... They actually take the witness and they they put it in their bra and then the little earbuds. And when you're walking around this condo, uh, you have to sort of make a hand signal to the girls before you talk to them. And they'll take the earbud out and then talk to you. But it absolutely rules in this condo. And I love it, too. It's just... I don't know. It's awesome. CC Witness. I just heard they've got a new price of one seventy nine ninety five worth every penny trust me it's loved here um dean radin is my guest we'll get right back to him i want to remind you i do have email if you want to send me email it's easy art bell at mindspring.com that's art bell a-r-t-b-e-l-l at mindspring m-i-n-d-s-p-r-i-n-g dot com love to get email i'm trying to answer all i can for the, all of you who helped out and sent me copies on the uh the immigration deal uh, a few weeks ago thank you from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And I, there's no way in the world I can answer everybody because it was just too much of... There were thousands of emails. And uh, so I'm sorry I didn't get... I'm trying to answer all of my email, but I'm doing the best I can. All right, back now to Dean Radin. And a few questions before we go to the phone. I just have to ask, uh, you recently conducted an experiment that you called the love study. The love study. What was that all about, Dean? A love study. That was that was a study looking at uh, whether one person's thoughts and emotions directed towards another person, typically a loved one, uh, uh-huh. does it affect their body? And this is this is our laboratory version of a distant healing experiment. So, uh, see, here's an interesting question. I'm I was sorry to hear that you have a cold. So it's frightening to think that millions of minds directed at you can have an effect. But would you be willing to have millions of beneficial thoughts directed at you to to help your cold get better? I would. Um, I and I at the same time I would cross my fingers that they're beneficial thoughts. Yeah. So that's that's part of the of the goal. So in in our experiment, we wanted to make sure that the the thoughts were correctly aligned because you, you're never quite sure what you're getting. So what we did was uh, we trained partners, one of whom was healthy and the other was recovering from cancer surgery or chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. So the, part, the healthy partner had a huge motivation to help the, their, their sick partner. Uh, and this was something you can't fake in a, in a lab. Even though it's a lab study, you can't fake that level of motivation because they really want to help. Mm-hmm. But in order to give them some hints on, on what to do or how to help, uh, we train them in a type of meditation where you cultivate the sense of compassion, and then you send it. You mentally send that compassion to your partner to help them. In this particular case, since the, the patients had all kinds of different problems, different kinds of cancers and so on, uh, we didn't want to target a particular body part or something. We just wanted to send beneficial thoughts. And then we measured the patient's physiology to see whether there was any 
difference when they were being thought about versus when they were not being thought about. And we also did other conditions where